Tonight, Samsung takes the shine out of Apple Pay, the mystery of one Google X project that went awry, and today's crazy funding news. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 277 for Wednesday, February 18th, 2015. Invest in yourself and start learning today. Lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed Samsung is buying mobile payment company Loop Pay for an undisclosed amount. This is a direct shot across the bow at the ubiquitous Apple Pay. According to several sources, Loop Pay technology works with existing NFC readers, but will also work with traditional magnetic credit card readers, which means it won't require merchants to upgrade their current systems, unlike Apple Pay. A report from Recode last year said Samsung was planning on including Loop Pay technology in the Samsung Galaxy S6, which we think will be announced at Mobile World Congress in a few weeks. Loop Pay has been available as an add-on attachment since last year. Here's an update to a story from last October when Twitter sued the U.S. Justice Department. Twitter's complaint is that their First Amendment, it's their First Amendment right to tell consumers specific details about how the U.S. government requests their data. The Justice Department, however, claims that this threatens national security. Twitter disagrees and says that the inability to reveal specific information in their transparency reports means that they're not all that transparent. At first, Twitter was the only company to stand up to the U.S. government this way, but GigaOM reports that this week tech companies like Wikipedia, BuzzFeed, The Guardian, and others filed friend-of-the-court briefs to support Twitter. In other Twitter news, Del Harvey, the Twitter executive in charge of trust and safety, says she is doubling down on policing abuse and working on building features into Twitter that will try to make people pause and think about what they're doing. The whole interview with Harvey is great, so check it out. The link is in our show notes. Sony released earnings yesterday, and with it, Chief Executive Kaizo Hurai announced a new strategy for the company that involved splintering off certain divisions. He didn't give specifics, but did say that they hadn't ruled out an exit strategy for their struggling smartphone division and were leaning toward a focus on PlayStation, movies, music, and their camera sensors, which are the camera sensors in most iPhones. And have you heard? Some people have iPhones. Critically acclaimed architect Eli Adia has been developing a software-powered construction process called Engineered Architecture since 1996. He brought this project to the Google X program in 2010, and now he's saying that they stole it. Russell Brandom, the reporter at The Verge, is here to give us a little background on the story. Welcome, Russell. Oh, thanks for having me. So what's a quick backstory? Yeah, uh, so this is... This story goes back to the first sort of days of Google X when they were, you know, looking for projects to change the world. He had a project that he thought was going to change the world, uh, engineered architecture, and they got together. And I think, you know, what happened next is sort of under dispute, but the project ended up spinning off without him into a standalone business called Flux Factory. And, you know, they don't think that what they're doing has anything to do with engineered architecture, but... He disagrees. So they 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 told him that, that the uh, project was done, and then they decided to keep going. And, and well, they told him that they were going to spin it off. I mean, this this is the part that's really under sort of dispute. And I and it, it is one of these situations where you know he everyone's got their own version of what happened. Um, but it does seem like from the moment he got to Google, he thought you know well, the purpose of this project is to take my idea, engineered architecture, and sort of make it into real software, which he couldn't do because he, he had no software background. And Google seems to have seen it kind of differently. They thought, you know, well, there's this huge opportunity in architecture. This guy has these interesting ideas. Let's see if there's something here. And I think it's, you know, it's the usual startup story where they're going to try lots of things and see what works. And you know, the agile startup is the term. And so I think there's this real disagreement over 
whether they ended up using his idea at all. Of course, you know, he says they did. So uh, he has been complaining about this for a while and telling a story, but he's only recently decided to sue Google. Um, and he's not actually yeah. doing it himself. He's being supported by a streaming media company called MacSound. Uh, and they're yeah. actually suing a lot of people. Um, I mean, suing Google on behalf of a lot of people. Um, it's true. Are, are they, what are, what's, are they patent trolls? What are they doing? Well, so they're not patent trolls in the traditional sense because they have this streaming media company. They're making products. They have a business that's not just suing people. But they're definitely very interested in suing Google sort of any way that they can. Uh, so one of the things that you saw in the in the complaint, well, anyway, they, they had a pre-existing case against Google because of technology that exists in YouTube that, you know, they got into this patent dispute of, well, was YouTube using their technology or were they using YouTube's technology? And so they have this existing conflict. And at a certain point, they said, you know, a lot of people are in our situation where they have this claim against Google, but they're scared to bring it to court and because Google is so large. And so they sort of put open season on lawsuits against Google. Um, and so I do think, you know, that announcement, at a certain point they said, if you have a claim against Google, come to us and we'll help you prosecute it. And that's certainly why this particular suit is being brought. Or, I mean, I think it's very plausible that that's why. Um, and I do think it's a, you know, it shows you that Google, while it is a very powerful company, also has real enemies that are willing to bankroll uh, lawsuits against it. Right. But so he was also saying most of the stuff he's saying now, even before he connected with these people. So I don't think that that is entirely behind his gripe with Google. So he's just saying they stole my idea. They're using it as their own. And I'm upset about it. He wasn't necessarily going to sue until this company came and decided. Well, he was very it. angry, but he said, you know, oh, well, Google's too powerful. I can't sue them. Mm -hmm. But I do think, yeah, I mean, the suit didn't launch until Max Sound, this sort of audio company, came in and said, we're looking for lawsuits against Google, at which point this architect's claim sort of circulated up and they ended up purchasing the rights to his intellectual property from him and so that they could mount the suit. Right. So what so Google X's program is, you know, people bring us your ideas, we'll make them happen. What does this story tell us about the problems with Google X? Well, it's interesting. I mean, I do think it was very early on in the project when this got started. And I do think this shows you some of the growing pains. So this new business, Flux, is still the only a uh, project that's spun off into an independent business. We've seen other Google X projects that spin off to become Google projects, like you know, Google Glass is probably the most famous one. Uh, um, Google Brain is an AI project that's sort of mostly internal, but started out as a Google X project. Um, this is the only one where you know they they got to sort of the end of it and said, you know, this doesn't really make sense within Google X. It's sort of a software market-oriented project that's very different from the other stuff Google X. X is doing, but it could be a really great business. You, you, what you're seeing now, you know, they're looking at architectural information, zoning information, and they're sort of bringing it all together. So if you wanted to build a building there, you would think, okay, what are the different zoning and legal, the sort of local legal ordinances that I would have to deal with? And it brings all of that information together. Um, and I think when you look at the patent for engineered architecture, it doesn't seem that similar, but because it has this background as a project at Google X where, you know, that, that had Adia involved, he has this claim that, you know, well, how do we know that these, what we're seeing isn't built on his ideas? It's very difficult to set. Right. So it's like he was just doing the real infrastructure that you can't even tell if it's been used or not. Yeah, well, I mean, also, he's an architect by trade. And so his primary interest was geometric buildings and how can we sort of, there, I think he, he located certain geometric shapes. He has 105 of them in an early patent filing where he says, these shapes are being used over and over again. We could mass produce these shapes and then use them to make different buildings in a sort of modular way. And, and this would make building construction and engineering better and, and much easier because you could just work from these pre-established things. Um, 
And it's one of these things, I mean, ideas are very tricky. I think there's a lot of, you know, Silicon Valley, you see a lot of claims where someone says, oh, you stole my idea for Facebook or you stole my idea for Twitter. And, and uh, you know, it, it's a real question of is it the idea or is it the execution? How does the idea change as you start to build it? Right. That is interesting. Well, Russell, what else are you working on? What other stories are you working on right now? Um, yeah, uh, we're working on a bunch of security things. Uh, we're also really excited over here. We just launched a new podcast series called uh, What's Tech that's sort of explaining uh, the basics of things like drones and uh, uh, the next one's on fan fiction, actually. So if you're not familiar with fan fiction, they'll uh, they'll give you a refresher course. Oh, great. Where can people get that podcast? Uh iTunes, uh, Overcast, wherever fine podcasts are sold. <laughs> <laughs> or wherever they're free. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. It's free. <laughs> well, thank you, Brandon. That was uh, Russell Brandon from The Verge. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. And coming up, Reddit gives away their ad revenue and IT workers stand up to office bullies with infographics. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. You would not be watching or listening to this show right now if you weren't interested in learning new things. So invest in yourself and learn more new things with a free 10-day trial to lynda.com. lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world. It has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, business, Excel, WordPress, Photoshop, and other software training. Are you looking to take your business to the next level? I recommend lynda.com courses like Branding Fundamentals, Writing a Marketing Plan, and a weekly series called Small Business Secrets, where small business coach Dave Crenshaw covers topics like accounting, marketing, management, and more. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace and on your own schedule from start to finish. All lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their fields. So do something good for yourself and sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash TN2. You'll get unlimited access to every course, including access on your iOS and Android devices. Plus, new courses are added each week. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead and learn something new. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Today in funding news, backed by pressure from excited investors, Uber expanded their latest funding round to $2.8 billion. And as we've reported this morning on Tech News Today, mobile messaging service Snapchat is looking to raise $500 million in a new funding round that would value the mobile messaging company at up to $19 billion. And in case you're keeping track, that's $16 billion more dollars than what Facebook offered for Snapchat in 2013. All records of that offer, of course, disappeared after 10 seconds. And if you're not already a fan of the social networking service Reddit, you should be. Today they announced that they'd be donating 10% of their 2014 advertising revenue to 10 charities you choose. They've partnered with Charity Navigator to give back $827,659.49. Go to reddit.com slash donate to enter the charity of your choice and then vote on the final 10. You must have an account and be logged in to vote. Google's fifth annual science fair opens for submissions today. This year's themes are it's your turn to change the world and what will you try? The competition is open to anyone on the globe between the ages of 13 and 18. The prize includes the prizes include $100,000 and a trip to the Galapagos. The fancy Google website advertising the composition competition does not say that they won't steal your idea and cut you out of the company. They start with it, so please read the fine print carefully. And did you know that 55% of IT workers say that they've been bullied by a coworker? While this study comes from a survey of only 250 US IT workers, it still might be true. The study comes from Connectria Hosting, whose CEO has started a movement called No Jerks Allowed to Stop Workplace Bullying, and not just for IT workers. According to Business Insider, the worst office jerk offenders are the know-it-alls, followed closely by the bullies. Check out nojerksallowed.com to see their profiles in jerks, including the phone addict, the idea stealer, 
and the immature coworker, which I know absolutely nothing about. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. Follow me on Twitter at, at Megan Maroney and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, where you might see me with a banana on my head. It's every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.